Hey all, welcome back to Bone Dry Bonsai. I'm Joel. Happy Labor Day to everyone. Um, hope hope you're all well. Um, we're well. Been taking a little bit of a break from videoing, doing bonsai, just letting things grow. Um, went on vacation, visited my sister in Ocean Park, Washington. Got out of the heat of California, um, up to 70 degrees on the peninsula it was absolutely gorgeous um, Lola if you watch this thanks for the trees thanks for the hospitality thanks for the awesome coffee the great food the relaxation and uh, we just enjoyed you we enjoyed you so much so yeah we collected a couple of trees off of her property up there got a couple of Sitka, Sitka spruce um, got a couple of alder I'll show you those a little later in the video, but for now I'm just choosing the lazy way to water in the heat dog days of summer. I'm not going to really be doing any work on any of the trees until probably leaf drop. So just getting through the heat and looking forward to some cooler weather. So that's what it is. And that's what we're doing. Hope you enjoy the video. Check it out. So yeah, you can see I'm, I'm being lazy with my water in these days. It's the end of summer. We're still in the hundreds here in Northern California. And uh, everybody's pretty much sick of it. That and all the smoke. And you know, I know that uh, breathing the smoke doesn't compare to the losses of the folks that have had uh, their homes burned up, but uh, it's a drag on the air quality for sure. I'm being lazy. My caretaker while we were gone kept everything alive and did an awesome job thanks Alex she even kept the dogs alive which was a positive I'm only watering once a day I uh, only a couple times this year did I water twice a day week at a time here and there maybe twice where we were just so dry and you know 107 108 something like that and I take it back to there's a couple of the trees that I'll sneak out in the morning and douse with a little bit of water because they're in smaller pots and maybe they've got a lot of foliage and uh, so I'll hit them early and then I do the whole batch in the late morning usually in about 11.30 a.m. when the bench is in the shade See this volunteer pine's just doing awesome. So yeah, there's something going on with my amber. I don't know. These things, these leaves were curling. They've been curling for a while and now all the edges are just, I don't know. I wish I knew. I think it's getting plenty of water. Maybe it's getting too much water. But it's got a lot of foliage and such a small pot, so. But yeah, you see it drains really well. I 
I still have not got any flowers out of my bougainvillea this year. It looks like something's trying to turn on this little back one. Dwarf wisteria is awesome. Growing like crazy. Needs to be cut. Needs to be at least have these long ones to prune back these. It, it just wants to be a vine. It is a vine. It wants to be a vine. I'm growing some moss. I'm growing some pretty decent moss, I think, for where I am. It's not easy growing moss in Northern California. Not in the Sacramento Valley. It's, uh, it's dry. <laughs> and a little bit warm and uh, you know the moss that I just lay on top of the trees I watched Nigel Saunders lay his moss on top of the trees that just doesn't work for me here um, it just dies it's too exposed it's almost like with the sphagnum moss and the uh, if, when you dry up the, the natural moss and mix it with the sphagnum moss and use it as a top dressing. I think that's my best chance for growing moss here. It just, it, it has, I don't know, it just gets to take, I guess. And it gets to grow kind of slowly and, and as the soil uh, gets the right amount of nutrients and it starts, everything starts to gel and, and it's all got good vibes, then, uh, then it wants to grow. Yeah, the red oak never has done what I really wanted it to do. I just want to show you guys some of my moss. I'm really proud of my moss. That's on the Thuya. That's some good moss growing there at the base of that oak. And the one behind it is growing moss. I'm excited about the moss. It's just not a given here. You just don't don't get it here like you'd like to have in some higher humidity areas but yeah kind of the oak section looking pretty decent I think I'm just gonna let them stay strong and then do some selection in the fall after the leaves fall off of those yeah there's one of the Quercus aerifolias it's still looking nice and healthy. I think that's the one that I had to do the root work on. My little Chinese elm that I'm trying to ground layer still looking healthy and happy. Looking forward to spring when I can pull that out. I think this top dressing is starting to turn a little green. More moss. Digging that. But yeah, that's one of my white ash trees I'm happy with its progress this is the bougainvilleas just not flowering this year at all except for that one in the back there the willows are pretty bunched up and these 
Australian willows are really long and spindly. I'm afraid to cut them because I don't know what's going to happen now. I think I'm going to wait until leaf drop on those as well and then hard prune them. The Procumbens juniper is uh, growing pretty well. This is Quercus agrifolia in the behind it and uh, seems happy. That's a Meyer lemon behind it. But yeah, again, I think I'm getting moss growing in there. My dwarf olive, a little bit of moss. Well, I was kind of happy with the progression on that this year. I finally got over my timidness and did some prunings and created some bifurcation anyway. I think next year I'm really going to rock with these trees. The Michelia pot's got some killer moss. And it grew well this year with the work I did on it. I didn't hurt it. So I've got some rocket branches that need to be uh, cut back or wired down. Overall, though, happy with its progress. It's another little procumbens juniper that I managed not to kill. I don't know how I'm going to style it. This white ash doesn't seem to want to grow the moss like I expected it to. I think I overdid it with the sphagnum moss. But uh, stayed happy this year. happy with its production. That's that little clump of Japanese maple that I stuck together in the back there. I think I've got nine that survived. This is the lone little what I thought was bishop pine when I initially planted the planting. This is the only one that survived. I think it's just a shore pine. But it did grow this year. My little Japanese maple is uh, kind of doing its thing this year pretty well. This corkscrew willow lost all of its interior leaves. And it still does have green leaves at all the tips, but everything on the interior went brown and fell off. So I'm just going to see what happens with it in the fall, wait for it to leaf drop, and then probably hard prune. I dig that tree. I got to do something about that massive wound in the front. I need to get carving on it. The Potentia survived that bending operation that I did on it. It does have quite a bit of new small growth, so I'm really happy with that. I'm still not sure what to do with that clump there at the base. And the boxwood also seems to be doing well. I've got some bits of green growing. You probably can't see it in camera, but I promise it is. It really is green. I think my moss is growing on it. So there's a shot of it, looking pretty good. My Monterey Cypress has surprised me by just continuing to do pretty well, considering what I did with it. So I got to figure out timing for more work. I want it to be strong though, but yeah, it's uh really nice at the top there which will probably end up coming off my little mulberry in the sugar bowl looks good and the suzuki azalea behind it got a little bit of pruning i'm still timid with that i gotta get over it and uh, figure it out this chinese pistache is uh continuing to do just fine Behind it is the boxwood that I did not wire. I actually think the one that I wired 
is doing better growth wise we'll get to it in a second this is the Schifflera that I uh, cut back root pruned and planted and behind it is my little ginkgo biloba good moss growth but it's still just a tiny little tree. <laughs> the Blue Atlas Cedar is just still kind of in the same state it was at the beginning of summer, but healthy, you know, it looks just good color and nice moss and yeah, whatever. My geraniums need work. They got good moss. This other Thuya got awesome moss considering the state of it when I put it in this bonsai pot it uh, I'm happy with it this little, little kind of laying down sideways sycamore is really the healthiest one I've got I took it back to three branches and uh, all the leaves are just really nice and green this is that wired out boxwood and yeah it just really seemed to be exploding with growth just really looking healthy and happy I'm gonna have to check it for wire bite I know they grow slow though I think my nicest moss is in the nursery container of this dwarf Alberta spruce which is kind of a bummer because in the springtime it gets put in a bonsai pot but uh, It's doing okay. It's got this one clump right here at the top that really threw out the shoots. This ficus has been healthy all summer. I flattened it out one time with wire, took it off. Um, probably should do it again. I think I've still got plenty of time with hot weather to uh, work on it. The Mugo Pine is uh, looking good, I think, considering the root work I did on it, taking it out of its nursery container, the timing of it wasn't the best. And I think I'm starting to grow moss on some of that soil, which is way cool. The Choisa Sea Aztec Pearl, I think has produced all the flowers it's going to produce this summer, but still growing healthy and happy. It's a sycamore which doesn't look bad in the back there I mean it's got some pretty good healthy leaves but it's pretty uninteresting tree it's a straight tree with straight branches definitely need to uh, work on styling on that this little deciduous oak valley oak Quercus levata is doing just fine happy with its progress this year getting some moss growth in the bottom of that container as well which is pretty cool my palm is just being a palm <laughs> not much you can do with a palm and behind it is the vicinium pink lemonade with good moss growth my willows in my two-tier pot are getting some good moss growth and just kind of growing happy I've kept the internet elm alive, so that'll be getting potted up in the springtime. It's I've cut it once. It needs to be cut again. The dwarf holly is healthy. The ficus behind it is healthy. And the last of my sycamores has got some browning leaves, but plenty of green leaves so not worried about it for the rest of the year I think it'll be fine till the leaf drop and then I'll figure out some pruning and this gold strike juniper has got to have something done with it this spring but it stayed healthy this summer
the Sequoia Sempervirens are pretty healthy. I think there's just always cutting back and reselection on these to you uh, figure out timing and get it right. This is the bench that the critters always want to dig up my trees in. You can see that they've just, they dig up these roots, something terrible. They're looking to either bury nuts or find nuts that they think they've put in there before. So I'm going to be doing something different with this bench. My little maple forest has uh, stayed okay. I think it put down some good roots this year. And my olive, I don't know, my olive is really suffering. Like I've got this one little patch of green right here. I think everything else is dead. That wood box killed me with this tree. And these leaves are hanging on. So I don't know if, if I'll be able to generate roots. I don't know. I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing and see what happens. I don't always like to soak the succulents. They just got a good deep water the other day. The aloe does seem to like Some good watering more frequently but the portulacaria afras and whatever this is I don't know if it's some kind of pencil cactus I'm trying to be careful with the jade because even though it's doing awesome since I put it in the pot I don't want to risk any kind of overwatering. but and then I'll show you these little alders that I picked up. I'm not I'm trying not to overwater them as well. But on these hot days, I know these things like to have some humidity. So these are those little alder seedlings. This one lost all of its leaves, but it looks like it's trying to rebud and grow. This one kept its leaves for the most part. This one may be drying up a little bit, but so I did keep most of those little tiny root balls intact, but I, I don't want to overwater. I want to give it a chance to callus and grow. Yeah, the jade's looking pretty good. All the leaves have plumped up nicely. And uh, it's got new growth on all the branches. So I think it's going to do well. These plants on this table are the ones that always get eaten by the mice and the rats or whatever it is. And so I'm trying to protect them. This guy, this is a shrub. It's orange cestrum. It was growing a nice trunk until it got eaten down. And it always wanted to put out suckers. So I decided to quit fighting it. And I'm gonna see what I can do with a clump style. I'm just kind of happy it's alive at this point. My Sarissa that got defoliated. I cut it twice. It's got a bunch of elongated shoots that need to be cut again. And it's got some nice moss. Really nice moss growing. So the Sarissa cuttings have no moss. I've got to get those top dressed. And I've got a bunch of elongated shoots on it that need to be taken back to the first pair of leaves too but it's healthy and it's growing strong 
I'll be doing that in an upcoming video. These are the Sitka Spruce. The volunteers that I got from my sister's property in Washington. This one obviously wasn't happy to come to California, unfortunately. And attached to the base of this was a nice limber or a nice uh, shore pine. Not, I mean, you know, long and spindly bonsai nice, not necessarily tree nice, but definitely bonsai nice. But uh, it didn't make it. I didn't even bother putting it in soil. Um, it was just too far gone. Yeah, and you know, I didn't dig these up at the right time of year. But, you know, I was in Washington in August. So they got collected in August. I need to make a trip back in the spring when the Chinook are nice and fat too. And good time to... Uh, collect trees but yeah this I think this one's gonna make it it's it's gonna be okay this is a dead section here I'll take off but I've got one two three four five little saplings that were uh, growing in her time basket yeah the needles look healthy on on that one I, I everything's holding on pretty nice there will be more work coming up. Just waiting for the heat of summer to pass. The trees are fine to just kind of exist and grow. And it's okay to take a break from them. But again, thanks everyone that uh, subscribes and likes the videos. I appreciate it. So, yeah, take care.